Hello there, one and all, and welcome to episode 416 of Love at First Scent with me, Persilaise, live on YouTube. Thank you very much for tuning in, whether you're watching live or you are watching the recording. First comment today goes to Drac, who says, hello from a snowy Glasgow. Oh yes, we've been hearing all about this and reading all about it. People stuck, flights being cancelled. Hope you're all okay there, not too cold. So happy to catch you live, says Tomato, says hello from Singapore. Probably slightly different weather there. Happy to catch a live after ages. Woozy here is as well. Sorry, Woozy is here as well, saying, Hey, love at first scent at a somewhat reasonable time in Australia, 2 a.m. <laughs> Sorry about that. The Christmas miracles have come early. Well, if, if you say so. Um, good morning from Austin, Texas, says Patchouli Papi. Sarah is here as well, saying, Hey, from Sweden. Angeline says, Hello, Mr. P. I haven't seen you here for a while, Angeline. Filippo is here as well. Thank you very much, all of you, for tuning in. Um, I am going to be relying on you to be my um, techie support today, my techie eyes and ears, because as you know, there is no support team in front of me here. It is just some lights and a camera and me. And um, there seemed to be a few funny different things happening as I was setting up the broadcast today. So just every now and then, let me know if everything's all right. If and, and particularly if the audio and the video are in sync, because some things seem to be happening with the mic connection. But anyway, I'm sure you will let me know the minute anything goes wrong. I'm probably going to make you all really, really conscious about whether the audio and video are in sync now. More hellos. Uh, David says hello from Cologne. You're very, very welcome. Uh, hello from Indiana, says Emily. Dubai says hi, Mr. P says Lagonda. Please say hi back to Dubai. Um, okay, the plan for today, uh, you, you know, famous last words, because I am planning to just do one long video, is to get through quite a few releases that either are, you know, genuinely new for this time of year or are new to me. Um, it, we, we, we've we started December, um, Advent has started, here comes the poinsettia, um, and I'm thinking, oh my goodness, the year is nearly over, there are still lots of things uh, that I have samples for that I haven't had a chance to smell yet, uh, and I always feel bad about um, missing out on scents that maybe should, should be given wider attention. Um, the other day, the other day, I, I did my showcase review on Strange Love, didn't I? Uh, Strange Love NYC. And even though I'm glad that I did the video and I'm glad that I was able to to talk about the sense with you, there was a little bit part of me as well that was dismayed to think that you know it's a brand that's been around for nearly ten years and I've only just smelt their perfumes and I've only just brought them um, to to your attention, even though actually you all knew about them, but you know what I mean. I suppose the, the, the brand Puente would probably be a better example because that is a much newer brand. Um, and and even though they released something last year, um, it was only a few weeks ago that I finally got to try it. Where am I going with this? I guess where I'm going with this is that um, some of these scents we may go through um, fairly quickly, some we may dwell on a little bit longer, but the, in, the the focus is going to be on trying to get through as many as possible, just because time is against us now, and there may be some gems out there that we really should discover before the year is out, so that maybe they could make it onto the my best of year list. Um, I am going to try to get through seven, possibly eight perfumes, most of which I do not know very well. Some of the ones that I've got here, um, uh, I've worn, but there I've also got little vials. Um, so basically, I think I just need to be quiet and get a move on. Um, I will just very quickly say, though, if you haven't already subscribed to this channel, please do consider doing so. And if you would like to find out information on how you can support my work, you should be able to see a link to my coffee page in the vid video description below. And sneak preview tomorrow at 5 p.m. UK time. So slightly later than today, I am going to succumb to all of your requests, and we are going to do a, a, a Madonna video, a, a scented, so to speak. There will be no conical bras. Um, scenting Madonna, top my top 10 Madonna songs, each one to go with a perfume, and that is purely because of you. You made me do it. Um, David says, have you tried the new Shalimar Lily yet? This is the first I've heard of Shalimar Lily. Musk in Heaven says, can you do Snoop Dogg too? That would be an amazing video, but I would need to improve my knowledge of um, Snoop's 
oeuvre. Okay. I bet you love Dear Jesse, says Rich Mitch. Why? I mean, I do like it, but it's not in my top 10. Why? Why, Why do I love Dear Jesse? Okay. We need to get a move on. And I think because I know what this one's like and I know that it's quite powerful, let's start with one that I don't know in the, in the sort of genuine, oh, Filippo, that's very, very kind. Thank you very much. Um, let's do this one. There are pre-sprayed blotters, as I said. This is, I think this still counts as new, new from Misenseer. This is called Palisandre Night. Oh gosh, you can't see that. How do I do this thing? Because it's a slightly different setup here. Maybe if I sort of just hold it there, you'll be able to see it. What do people do with that? focus thing where it's no that's not going to work is it? anyway this is this is palisandre night from um misencia the brand that was founded by alberto morias um all of the perfumes are by alberto morias it is a brand i mean i i don't i don't wear personally anything from the collection um there is nothing that i have fallen in love with but then also it is a massive collection and um, I haven't tried everything. I'm just going to ask one more time because on my monitor here, I am really out of sync. So maybe I should just go on 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 YouTube on the tablet the way I used to before and just see what's happening. Um, I'll turn the sound down. Of course, I would have to skip ads and everything. What's happening there? Yeah, well, oh God, I'm such an idiot. If I turn the sound down, I will not know if I'm out of sync or not, will I? Okay, so that that's not really a very, very good idea. <laughs> oh, dear. Go back to bed, Persilis. Um, uh, not out of sync much, DMS says, just a bit skippy. Oh, that's, that's just my energy levels. I don't know. In sync for me as well. Okay, I'm going to stop being paranoid. David says pretty much in sync. Good enough for me. Okay, let me know if it go. If, if I don't hear from you, I will assume. Um, I will assume there is no problem. Right, Palisandra night. Let's see what this is like. Um, Red Palisander. Do you remember Red Palisander from Comme des Garçons, which I think was um, composed by Jan Vanier? That was a that was a good scent. That's that's one that I keep sort of thinking I should add to my collection. Really. <laughs> oh, Wanda says out of sync for me. Oh dear. Well. Let's just hope it improves because there's probably nothing I'm going to be able to do about that now. <clears throat> let's just let's just power on through. So, Palisandra Night. Ah, okay. Well, shades of red Palisander from Comme des Garçons. Um, so, what are we getting? We're getting that kind of slightly bitter, sour, citrusy woodiness that you would expect from something called palisander. Um, and a feeling that maybe it's going to be a very, very kind of Alberto Morias musky base, but I should qualify that by saying not in a kind of CK1 sort of way, but just a heavy use of musks. I'm already thinking, is he linked the palisander with cashmeran? There's something yeah, really quite kind of velvety, spicy, cashmere-like about it. But just at this first sniff, just at this first sniff, the, the thing that I'm thinking about this is what I think about a lot of Misenseer perfumes, is that they feel, a lot of the time, they feel like very, very pleasant smelling blocks, but not necessarily kind of complex, layered, faceted scents that I want to get to know. You know, it, it, they, they really feel like perfume as a kind of body odor accessory. And I know a lot of people watching this will be thinking, but goodness, isn't that what perfume is? Isn't perfume something that you, you know, you just have in, in your household and you spray on yourself in order to make yourself smell better? And yes, absolutely. For a lot of people, in a lot of cases, that's what it is. That is what the industry is built on. Um, but it, I guess we want a little bit more on this channel, don't we? I think Rachel put it very well last week when we were talking, when we were on one of our videos. You know, you kind of want something to engage that side of things, but you also want something to engage this as well. Um, and with Misenseer, I, I kind of think, yes, if I, if I wore this, I would probably smell very, very pleasant. Um, but I wouldn't feel 
like I'm having a conversation with the maker throughout the day. Not that maker, this maker. Um, just to clarify. Um, and and I, 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 I like to be wearing a perfume that that achieves just the right level of making me aware of it so that I kind of be, you know, so that I'm thinking, oh, well, it's done something interesting here and I quite like how it's achieved this and how it's achieved that. Um, all these years, I've never bought any Mousse and Cire. What's their standout fragrance, says Aria. Um, I, I, I don't know, maybe somebody else can answer that. Andy says, like wearing a scented candle, perhaps. Yes, that yeah, that's, that's a good description. We have a press release, people. I will let that blotter do its thing and then we'll go to the pre-sprayed one as well. Um, what do we say? A quote from uh, Alberto Marias himself first. What does the night smell like when you walk through it until dawn? A time when everything seems more intense, more alive. And so begins the story of Palisandra Night, the enchanting new fragrance painted by Alberto Marias. Inspired by the mysterious depths of the woods at night, when nature is awake while the world sleeps, imagine a dark forest full of moss-covered trees where a cool, gentle breeze caresses the crisp leaves as they dance under a silver moon. Captivating woody notes play a leading role here as guyac wood, Australian sandalwood, dreamwood and patchouli are entwined with cooler tones of ambrox and elemi alongside nutmeg and powdery musk. The new Mizincia Palisandra night fragrance will be available from November in the UK at Selfridges, Harrods and Harvey Nicks. And that's it. Okay, at least nice prosaic press release. Um, yeah, it, you know, all, all of those things, yes, okay, they're all there. The creaminess of sandalwood, I suppose, is coming through. Where's the pre-sprayed one? Here's my palette. Let's put the tablet away before I start wrecking everything here. Um, what's this doing? Yes, much the same. I mean, I, I, Marias is also the master of the linear scent, isn't he? Uh, very much like, you know, Sophia Groisman in, in that regard. She would build her scents on massive, massive blocks of musk. You know, she loved her galaxolide, didn't she? I'm sure she still does. Um, and the scents tended to be fairly li linear. And I, I guess Alberto Marias is the sort of male counterpart of that style in a way. Um, and you smell it? Uh, you immediately get it. Perhaps that's why they sell well, because sales assistants and people working in shops can say to potential customers, look, this is it, this is what you're getting, this is what it's going to be like. Um, and there isn't a huge amount to say about it. Does it make me think of a forest at night? Not particularly. It actually makes me think of walking into quite an urban, office-based environment where everybody has very, very politely chosen to spray themselves in the morning with something inoffensive and extremely pleasant because they're all considerate people and they're all being polite to each other. It's just it's just a very kind of pleasant wallpaper smell. And maybe that is damning with faint praise, I suppose. But it'll it'll do well. It'll do well. Lots and lots of people love this sort of thing. So let us move on. In the interests of, of, of doing things quickly, let us move on. Um, another one, actually, that I just want to get out of the way quickly, because, um, again, just to be able to say that I've reviewed it, I, I was really, really unimpressed with this, but I thought, okay, let's mention it. Uh, it's it's the latest in the main collection from Le Labo. I don't know how many of you out there have tried it. I've got a little vial. Um, this is called uh, Lavande 31, and no point holding this up to you. So Lavender 31. Um, and, you know, has there ever been um, a house with a more varied range than Le Labo? I mean, there are, there are some things from Le Labo that they've released that I really, really adore. Some of my favourite scents, their Patchouli 24, their Santal 33, which, you know, I'm a fan of Santal 33. Um, and this year I thought their City Exclusive, their Myrrh, was really wonderful. One of my favourite releases of the year. Let's put aside its price. But then I got this vial of their lavender, and I thought, oh, actually, you know, the prospect of, of, of a lavender from Le Labo is, is, is interesting. But, oh, my goodness. Let's see if it actually acts the same. I don't have a pre-sprayed one of this because I thought I do not want to put myself through this again. There, Ylang is fantastic, says Benji. Absolutely. Ylang 49, I adore. You know, hang on to my bottle. 
yeah, this was. I mean, it, it, it's it's really really interesting. Do they put all of their crea creativity and their money and the budget into the city exclusive now? Because th they didn't used to. The city exclusives quite often were not the most desirable ones. They were kind of interesting, but but they they tended to save their most interesting and and most viable work for the main collection. But the main collection lately, you know, we had we had the Citron a couple of years ago, didn't we? Which was again a bit sort of shoulder shruggy. Probably the most interesting in the main collection was the tobacco. I forget the number that came after it. Um, but this, this is, I'm sorry to say, this is a, a, a little bit of an insult to lavender. You know, lavender is one of the most beautiful smells. It is so faceted. The way it mixes that kind of caramelized side of things with a herbal inflection with the floral side, with the camphoraceous side, with the woody side. This is this is lavender that has been kind of like bleached, really bleached. It's got a real paint stripper, bleachy quality to it, bleached to within an inch of its beautiful lavender coloured life. And the, when I first got the vial, I'd, I immediately sprayed some on skin um, and I'd, I'd had enough after about two minutes. So yeah, j j you know, for the sake of the record, I've sort of reviewed this. I've mentioned it because a few people did actually ask me when it came out what I thought of it. Very, very, very definite thumbs down. And I think we should just move on. Um, uh, Woozy says, Patchouli 24 is quietly one of the most genius takes on patchouli ever. Yeah, I mean, it, 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 it's, it's also one of the most sort of sci-fi perfumes I've ever tried. I really, really love it. And I wish, wish, wish I had bought a backup bottle a while ago because, of course, it is now so expensive. Like, every now and then I will look at the Lalabo site and think, oh, could I afford 50 mils of patchouli? And I think, oh, my goodness, well, maybe we'd better pay the bills first and then look at it. But, yeah, one day, one day, maybe I'll treat myself to a 30 mils of, of the patchouli. Um, I think their city exclusives are all right, Cesaria. None I've smelled just justifies the price. Well, we, we're not going to have the price discussion today, I don't think. Uh, Aria says, Lalabos, Elang, and Oud are my favorites. Totally different, but masterpieces in their own right. Bergamot 22 is very nice, says Filippo. I liked the uh, Bergamot, um, like, bath products that they did. Do you remember that the, they did the soap? Um, and in some hotels, you could get them. But anyway, let, let's move on. Let's move on. I don't want to dwell on that. Um, let's go to the... Actually, no, let's do one of the vials. Let's mix it up a little bit. Um, these are some vials that I just, just got myself. Uh, um, and this is the latest from Aesop. Uh, and it, I believe it's the final installment in their um, what are the what is that what's that series called that they did their other topias is that right? Let me just bring the website up here. Um, I haven't got a huge amount of text on it. Like all of the other other topias, it's composed by Barnabé Fillon. It's called Uranon, I think. Um, Uranon and on and on because they all ran on and on away from the scent. I don't know, I haven't smelt it. I have a pre-dipped blotter, but let's try this one first. So, who ran on? The other topias have not fared terribly well in the reviews on this channel, have they? Regular viewers will know. Um, <clears throat> I love Uranon, says Emma. Ah, okay, well, let's label the blotter and get smelling. Tell us, tell us why you love it, Emma. Right, quick clearing of the... Old lavand nasal passages. Oh, actually, that is interesting. <laughs> this makes me feel like I have just walked into a chemist's, but like in the 80s. You know when walking into a pharmacy or a chemist was a serious business where everything smelt like you know, it was it was the it was the land where germs would never be able to cross the threshold, and you could you could almost like smell the antiseptic and the disinfectant emanating out of the walls. Um, this has got that real, real. Is the word I'm looking for terpenic? Maybe it's not terpenic. Um, real, real clean feel, and yet somehow it also feels very naturalistic at the same time, like like you're walking barefoot across a landscape of chalk, of really, really white chalk, and the chalkiness is leaving a residue on your on your bare feet. 
I have no idea why this image is coming to my head, but it must be resonating with something. But it's really, really interesting. You know, when I did one of my reviews a few days ago, I forget who it was. It could have been Philip watching, who said that the sense had evoked some very, very poetic descriptions from me. That they were, they were his words, and so that must have been a good thing. But and and I think I think that's right. I think the worst thing is smelling something that actually doesn't really make you see or feel or think anything. That doesn't feel as though there's much for you to delve into, for your nose and your brain and your heart to delve into. But sometimes you smell things and suddenly these these vistas open up, unfurl themselves under your nose before your very eyes. And you may not particularly like what you're smelling or what you're seeing, but you are seeing lots and lots of things. And I think that's a sign that something interesting is happening. That's a sign that something interesting and genuinely attention worthy has been created. Um, and this is this is kind of doing that thing. Um, Christian says syrups and iodine. Yes, that kind of yeah, you know, sort of slightly sweet cough syrup, but iodine as well, and something chalky. I don't I don't know why. Um, what does the brand say? Uranon is inspired by the enduring stature of a monolith. It balances aromatic herbal notes and dry woods with mineral accords. Yes, okay, very mineralic. A nod to the dialogue between the living world and a stone circle casting shadows in the moonlight. Okay, so chalkiness, stone, not a million miles away. And you see, I love that when there is a kind of... Um, convergence or even a semi-convergence between what you smell and what the perfumer <laughs> intended. That's amazing. Um, official notes are lavender, petit huh, lavender again, and elemi, frankincense, chamomile, and hay, and then myrrh, patchouli, and tonka bean. But it, it, it it's more abstract than that. Where's the pre-dipped one? Let's find the pre-dipped one. Ah, uh, the labels on this thing. No, no, here we go, Aesop. Okay, is it waxy? Um, no, 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 it's actually drier. It's much drier than that. And, ah, now it feels, now it feels quite frankincense-y and hay-like. This, this is interesting, this is interesting. And myrrh, yes, I'm glad I looked up the notes. Funnily enough, a few hours ago, I was burning some myrrh. And it was really interesting. If you burn a lot of frankincense and then suddenly myrrh comes along, you, you really get to see the difference. Myrrh is so much darker and somehow earthier and deeper and more, more fungal in an interesting way. Um, this, is, this is nice so far. Really, really evocative. Mm, one to come back to, one to come back to. Now I need to, I need to, I need to treasure the, the, the drops on that blotter. Okay. Hmm, good one. Right. Let us move on. Let us move on. Let's do let's do the Matière premiere. Um because uh this is another one that I've already smelt and put onto my skin. Oh, let's get another blotter. Um to my regret, I have to say. Now Matière Premier is another one of these brands as well that seems to have got a lot of attention, a lot of love. Um uh, founded by Aurelien Guichard, uh, who a perfumer who's made lots and lots of really good work. He's 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 been instrumental in bringing back um, or restoring to something like their former state a lot of the scents from Robert Piguet. He's done some great work there. A lot of people like his work for Bond Number no. Nine, and he set up his own brand called Matier Premier. Um, and I've reviewed most of them, I think. Uh, lots of people seem to love them, which is fine. Um, I, it was not love for me, except I seem to remember that I thought their narrowly was very, very enjoyably wearable. This one is called, I didn't tell you what it's called, did I? It's called Vanilla Powder. Um, and yeah. Thank you. Who is it? Cheap Imitation says that Matia is nuclear woody amber. Yes, it is. It's oh, it, It's a really, really knock you over the head with a sledgehammer, aggressive, boorish, leering, 
woody amber, you know, vanilla powder. What does vanilla powder make you think? Vanilla powder, I, I would imagine it's going to make you think of something quite gentle, quite delicate, quite tender. Okay, so maybe this is meant to subvert our expectations. Um, but I think it could have subverted our expectations by not going for a real block of woody slash sickly sweet um, aggressiveness. You know, it's kind of like j j just to bludgeon you into submission. Um, does it have much vanilla? Asks Woozy. <laughs> yeah, probably some kind of vanillic thing is in there. But no, it, it's... I found it really, really, really sickly and off-putting. Um, I don't have much to tell you about it. It's meant to be a contrast between a dark vanilla and a white Palo Santo wood. Its main ingredient, according to the website, is a vanilla absolute from Madagascar. And then they just say that they've got a blurb that says, Palo Santo oil from Ecuador brings structure and verticality. The addictive character of vanilla is reinforced by coconut powder. Maybe it's the coconut that's giving me that kind of stomach churning effect. White musks envelop the vanilla and powders for a contemporary luminous perfume. I actually don't think it's luminous at all. It's, if anything, it's the opposite. It's it's like a vacuum kind of sucking the life out of everything around it. Um, yeah, it, it, I, 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 you know, this is a this is a brand with which I am not in sync. Uh, I'm not, and I don't really understand why it is that people seem to go for it so much. Where is the pre-dipped one? Is this the pre-dipped one? Uh, it would help if I could read my own writing. Where are we? Are we going to... That's not it. That's not it. That's not it. Ah, here we go. Yes. Yes, yes. Uh, no, it's just... It's just so crude, and and, and you know it's like the last thing I associate Aurelien Anguichal with. Is is there a sense of him actually kind of thinking, okay, I need to make something the kind of thing that people are going for, the kind of thing that needs to sell? Um, no, sorry, uh, that's a no as well. <clears throat> so we are da we're not doing too badly for time because there are there are four more, yes, four more that I would like to share with you. Let's do. Let's talk about Andrea Mack. Uh, way back when um, when she launched, uh, she's the Icelandic artist. When she launched her brand, she came to the UK, and I'm pretty sure I interviewed her. Um, and I thought a, a lot of her scents were very, very interesting. Some more interesting than others, but you know, don't you expect that? Sorry, I've just got to reach down. Otherwise, we're going to have a spillage here. Um, I really, really liked Coven, and Coven is again another one of those ones that's like on my, on my permanent list of things to see if I can get one day. Um, this is brand new from her. As far as I know, from what I have been able to find out, she still does not reveal the identity of her perfumers, uh, which personally I still think... <clears throat> Is a little bit of a shame. Aria says, I have Coven by her. There you go. One of my favorite greens. Don't, I don't know much else about her. Um, and this is, as I say, called Supernova. Okay, a, a pleasant enough start. I mean, it's not like a, a, a stellar explosion in your face, that's for sure. What are we getting? I suppose I'm getting something vaguely kind of incensey and gently floral as well. Maybe something very, very kind of quietly rose-like. But for something called Supernova, I think I was expecting something bigger. Um, oh, F.A. says, I have craft and it's nice, like a colder, more masculine Avignon. Interesting. Uh, Frag Chai Town says, I tried birch from Andrea Mack and thought it was meh. Yeah, the, there were there were some there were some that I you know like that that I, I agreed with as well. Um, okay, I did, let, let's see let's see what they say about it then. It's not not much to say there. See again, that one is not the sparks aren't flying, the synapses aren't firing. Uh, from their website, Supernova is an exploration around the smell of a visual explosion in space, the optical luminosity of a supernova. Okay. 
Moving into the darker months in Iceland, the mood shifts to the mystical fall with bright stars gazing in the sky, twirled in the purple hues of the aurora borealis. An intense spicy opening where fresh cardamom, captivating cinnamon and racy saffron blend in a perfect accord. Okay, now that I read it, I go along with the cinnamon, but I, I don't know if it's an intense spicy opening. In the heart, aromatic lavender, oh dear, we've got a lavender theme today, is enhanced by the subtlety of cedarwood and mysterious olibanum. Okay, so woody incense, like I said. Um, but explosion, I mean, again, to try to give the brand the benefit of the doubt, this is sold as an extrait de parfum, which I guess me, you know, all of these things are best tried on skin, but maybe this one in particular would be better on skin. Um, but it just feels, it, it feels rather flat, it feels rather flat. And, and I think supernova for something like this, where's the blotter? There we go. Um, Leah Ma says, speaking of the L word, a list from you would be great, sir. What top 10 lavenders? That's a, that's a good idea. I never thought of that. I should do a top 10 lavenders. My favorite lavender fragrance remains good old Gris Claire from Serge Lutens, but I'd love to discover new ones. That is that is a good idea. Let's, let's, let's find out. I have a bottle of Coven, such an atmospheric green, says Sharon. Yeah, I, I need to get Coven as well. So this is, this is pre-dipped. Hmm. Um, but yeah, pleasant enough. Um, cedar woody incense, but all very, very kind of quiet, toned down. It, making me think actually of what I said about mizincere at the beginning. You know that this is this is smell as pleasant background hum, um, rather than something to be cranially stimulating. Um, Very pleasant. In fact, probably let's just do a quick comparison with the with the mizincia. Maybe even more pleasant than the mizincia. Um, well, I don't know. They're much of a muchness, really, in a way. It's like it's, it's just this 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 aura of pleasantness hovering in in the background. And I guess I guess you can't say a huge amount more about that. So let's move that out of the way. Okay. So now we are down to three. One which I'm genuinely, genuinely excited about and I haven't smelt before. I just sort of dipped the blotter the, the, a couple of hours ago and I thought, um, let's see what it's going to be like. But not that one yet. Let's do the latest one from Frappin. Again, a brand that seems to be very much um, under the radar in the UK. Uh, when, they, when, they, when they launched the perfume line, they did some really, really great work with um, Duchaufour, didn't they? Um, I forget the dates and the numbers, but uh, it was some of the dated ones that were really, really such fantastic sort of boozy, woody scents. Um, and I don't know what the, this is called, Bon Chauffe. So, and apparently, the in cognac production, the Bon Chauffe is the second distillation, which apparently is very, very important. Um, but I also wonder if somebody could tell me what bon chauffe mean. I mean, does it mean like well baked or well cooked? I don't know. Because, um, well, I, I don't know. Somebody will be able to tell me. You can look it up. But this is bon chauffe from Frappin. I don't know who the perfumer is, but maybe I will be able to um, find out in a moment. Uh, Let's see. Good warmth, says Karistian. Yeah, it must be that kind of thing, right? Um, let's see. Okay, well, there is a warmth coming through, and it feels frappant in the sense that it's got that kind of boozy feel happening to it. But there's a kind of strange sweetness. It's a kind of Christmas pudding sort of booziness. And for those of you who have never had a Christmas pudding, it's a, they're very love love it or hate it type things. But basically, a, a Christmas pudding is kind of like a very, very dense Christmas cake style mix. So tons and tons of fruit, maybe some nuts, really, really kind of dark treacly, and, and then it's steamed. 
um, and and it's also flambéed. Traditionally, it's flambéed. Um, so you can imagine maybe what I'm getting here. Gavin says it has plum and bran notes. Okay, yeah, definitely that kind of. But but that booziness, you know, that that Christmas pudding thing is really really quite well done actually, because it's hovering somewhere on the verge of chocolate liqueurs, but it's got that dense. What's the other uh, the the cake as well? Um, does it originate in? I, I don't know if it's in. The, is, it, is it Caribbean or is it? Is it more like sort of Guyanese? Is it called black cake? Uh, if you've never had black cake, you need to have black cake. Assuming it's called, I'm pretty sure it's called black cake. Um, apparently, quite difficult to make well, um, but it, it's that kind of thing. Um, yeah, I, I I would be wanting to kind of have this sort of it feel it feels like a sort of golden ambery liquid pouring down and i wouldn't mind having it being poured down on me this is quite interesting uh so yes apparently it's davana black pepper plum thank you very much cereal notes veti there cedar patchouli and benzoin um so it's a woody woody boozy fruity but that sense of rich decadence is there as well. Makes me think of something that I was, um, Filippo says Black Forest. No, 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 not, not Black Forest Gatto. That's something very, very different. The, the, there is there is a, I'm pretty sure it's either Caribbean or Guyanese, very, very heavy, dense cake. And I think it's called Black Cake. I think there was even a best-selling novel that came out a year or so ago called Black Cake, which was sort of about family history, sort of passing down the recipe for black cake. Some, somebody will tell me, but Black Forest is something else. I, I know about Black Forest. Um, let's see the pre-dipped one. Is that the one I want? Yes, okay. Um, okay, it's become a bit... No, it's actually quite interesting because now there's a sort of interplay between the plummy note and the cereally sort of note, and the cereally note is is a little bit sour, but you get that kind of linking in nicely with the cedar, the dryness of the cedar. No, I, I think this is all right. This is interesting. This Oh, Gavin says, I googled it. It is called black cake. Thank you very much. If you ever have an opportunity to have some black cake, you need to have it as long as it's a good one, because it's a really, really nice stuff, especially if you like fruit cake, if you like, a, you know, sort of British Christmas cake. Um, I mean, it's not, I, I guess it's not sort of wildly evocative, but it's interesting. I would I would put this on skin just to see, see what it does. Um, sounds like it it would dry down well on skin, says Karistian. Yeah, it might. I, I am very definitely moved to try it on skin. Okay. And f uh, the last one <coughs> of the vials is something that I'm really interested to try, a brand that I have not known a good deal about at all. This is the latest from Roberto Greco, who apparently just has three perfumes under his brand. And this is called, now I have no idea how you pronounce this, but it's it's spelled R-A-U-Q-U-E. So I don't know, is that roque? Roque, which apparently is the French word meaning um, horse, as in your voice going horse. Um, so uh, you could go a bit horse, so you could go a bit roque, trying to say roque all the time, but I have no idea if that's how you pronounce it. Um, Let's label it. And one of the reasons why I got this vial and I got a little bit excited to try it is because it is a perfume by um, Christopher Sheldrake. And that is always a very, very interesting thing. For those of you who may not be aware, Christopher Sheldrake has long been um, at Chanel uh, as uh, I forget what his actual title is, but he definitely has a hand in the creation of the exclusives. Um, he's always sort of there providing support and guidance for the creation of the perfumes. And also for many, many, many years now, he has effectively been the sole perfumer for Serge Lutens. And I did not know that he did work for other brands. And so here is his Roque, Roque, <laughs> for um, 
Roberto Greco. Um, Christopher Sheldrake, my favourite, says Aria. I'm an old school Lutin's head. Yeah, I know. I mean, the, the thought of trying something from Sheldrake that isn't Chanel linked and isn't Lutin's linked is interesting. This should be a banger, says Filippo. It should. But is it going to be? Let's find out. Um, oh, gosh. Oh, suddenly I'm back in the 80s, but in a good way, because it's it's kind of like like how some of those big, big men's 80s masculines used to be. But not, I'm not thinking Antaeus, but maybe something like, what am I thinking of? When did things like Xerius come out, you know, from Givenchy? Was that 80s or was that already 90s? Um, but what's going on? There's something kind of strangely greeny, leafy, smoky, tobacco-y in there, hay-like. But also something very gently powdery. It's like there's something quite equine about it as well. Maybe it's because I've got the word horse on my head. I don't know, but Ah, th th this is fascinating. This is really, really fascinating. Lindsay says to me, it was totally genderless, didn't feel masculine. Aria says, Roque is so good. I didn't purchase a bottle because it's very similar to Amouage Myth's Woman, which I have. I don't remember Myth's very well. But Myth's Woman has a lot of Ambroxan, which Roque didn't seem to have. I must revisit. The bottle, says Gavin, looks old school Shiseido-ish. I've got a picture of it here. Yeah, I guess you're right, actually. Yeah, I hadn't thought of that. Um, this is fascinating. Oh, um, <clears throat> I don't know very much about it because um, the, the website doesn't tell you very much. Uh, it, it's meant to be, it says that it's born from uh, Roberto Greco's encounter with Christopher Sheldrake to do, to go with a, a, a photograph. And it's meant to be black currant bud, violet leaf, cassia absolute, myrrh, a mushroom farm accord. Wow. Osmanthus Absolute, Narcissus Absolute, Pine Tar Leather, and Ambrorome. And Ambrorome is a really, really interesting, very, very animalic ambery material. The smell of a body about to implode, says Lindsay. Um, but, but you've quoted that. Is that like, where have you got that quote from? Is that something they've said? <clears throat> um, Gavin says the note list says hardcore perfume. Uh, Chief Imitation says it's very horsey to me, maybe an intended double entendre, but that would only work in English, right? Um, it's, oh, I'm liking it. I want to wear this. I want to wear, where's, um, where's the pre-dipped one? What's it doing? Lindsay says, I loved his Porte Sapo, the best Narcissus I've ever smelled. Take that, Ostara. Oh, interesting. Maybe I need to get little vials of the other two as well. So this is this is now about an hour and a half old. Oh, wow. Now, who was it that said they reviewed it? Did you, did somebody said you reviewed it wider. Did you like it as well? Were you sort of a bit blown away? Oh, what is it doing? That mushroom thing is really interesting. Like, you didn't think it would be good to smell of mold, but actually it is. But no, it's, I think it's because it's, it's, it's leather. It's a really, really interesting leather because it brings out that kind of slightly fungal side of the leather, but it also links it with the fungal side of the myrrh. Um, and the pine stops it from just kind of descending into this morass. Oh, it's nicely done. And and feels tobacco-y, even though I didn't read tobacco in that list, did I? Um, cheap Imitation says, oh, yes, me, I bought it from Lucky Scent. I really like it. Ah, okay, I'm glad, I'm glad. Um, Gavin says, just the styling of the brand makes these perfumes look worth smelling. And Ilya says, hi from Melbourne. Oh, you're up late again, but thank you very much for tuning in. He did another horsey scent with Corticato, says Pradeep. Yes, you're right. You're right. Uh, one of the other ones was by Marc Antoine Corticato. Um, it could be a modern masterpiece, says Aria. I should just get it because I trust Sheldrake. Um, 
But also, what is it that's making me think 80s? I wonder if it's calling to mind some kind of memory or something, or maybe just the fact that it's, because it does lean, I guess, more masculine, but maybe the fact that it's kind of big and masculine and complex and interesting, and maybe that nowadays to us just smells 80s or spells 80s. Any similarities with Chypre Mousse? I'd have to revisit that. Sorry, I can't remember. It's like doing the thing in a stable, says Pradeep, if you say so. Some of us don't have such experiences that we can call on for um, our personal references. Eric Brandon says, I can't remember. Is this one limited edition? Um, I, I, I don't know. I absolutely don't know. Um, also reminds me of Halston, says Aria. Hmm. Sounds like I need a trip to Mayfair, says Gavin. Ah, now, is that because in the UK they're stocked at Chavoy? Because I couldn't find out. Do, are they stocked at Chavoy? Maybe, Gavin, you can you can tell us. Okay, and then finally, this is one that I have smelt um, already. It's uh, newish from Crivelli, uh, the brand that has given us some good things this year. Um, oh, Cheap Imitation says only 500 made, unfortunately. Oh, dear. I wonder if that's part of, like, because they must have to make some kind of a deal with... Um, with Shell Drake, I don't know. I mean, you know, like, is he is he is, is he a totally free agent? Does he just get to do what he likes? But do they sort of say, look, does he say, look, I can make a perfume for you as long as it's not going to be sold in perpetuity? Um, I don't know. Now, but this is the going back to Crivelli. This is a Harrods exclusive called Oud Stallion, made by Jordi Fernandez. Um, and I I think that we have a press release, which I will read, just in the interests of fairness. But I think otherwise we can deal with this one fairly quickly, but this is now not to damn it with faint praise, because we've smelled this kind of thing before. It's 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 a leathery, rosy, very, very definitely Arab market-centered oud, but it, but it does that very well. I'm, I'm, I found myself quite convinced by it. I was also really, really impressed with its balance between diffusiveness and um, longevity, because it's actually not as crazy diffusive as you might. I mean, it is pretty diffusive, but not as crazy diffusive as, as you might think, but very, very, very long lasting, um, impressively long lasting. Um, Christian says, Oud Stallion sounds like the worst perfume name ever. Well, yeah, I mean, it's, it's not a fantastic name, but it's a very Harrods name. And I guess the green is meant to make us think of Harrods. Um, it, it's, it's fine. Um, no, I mean, it's more than fine. If you haven't smelt this sort of thing before, if you are on the lookout for a kind of very, very overtly, obviously, Arabian oud, um, th th this is this is okay. Um, long lasting, but not overly oppressive. That's a nice sweet spot, says Woozy. Yes, it, it does that kind of thing. Like I said, I have a press release. I think the press release is quite long, so I won't spend too much time on it. Uh, Maison Crivelli presents its fifth extract, Oud Stallion, developed in collaboration with perfumer Jordi Fernandez, launching exclusively at Harrods. For this latest opus, Thibaut Crivelli, who I'm still trying to get for an interview on this channel, was inspired by the striking memory of smelling Oud while attending a horse race. I guess that would happen a lot if you went to a horse race in the Middle East. Oud Stallion revisits the key ingredient in haute perfumery by contrasting the depth and elegance of Oud with an alluring, smoky leather accord. Purebred saffron, cardamom, main. Okay, I can see what this press release is going to do. Right, let's try that again. Purebred saffron, cardamom, main, nutmeg, stirrup, spicy reins. In the saddle, oud stallion, animalic rose, under starter's orders, oh dear, stride, cedar acceleration, patchouli fence, tonka turn, a leather, woody, smoky gallop. Let's just turn the page and not dwell on that. Okay, did you see what they did there? Apparently, it is concentrated at 32%, which is pretty high. Uh, it's meant to be spicy, luminous, floral, rich, faceted. So we've got, we've got the ingredients again, the notes rather, cardamom and nutmeg, the oud accord. Interesting that they say oud accord. Uh, a floral heart of rose, geranium, osmanthus, and the leather accord. And the perfumer's secret is tonka bean, which gives the fragrance an addictive comforting quality. And um, I don't really particularly think we need to read any more. They say that they, oh, apparently it's got saffroline from Givaudan. We talked about that just a few days ago. Um, and also some or pure materials. That's always interesting. As they say here, it's a label created by Givaudan 
that is awarded to the finest, most emblematic natural perfume ingredients. Oud Stallion is mainly composed of or pure Grand Cru raw materials, Rose Absolute from Turkey, Geranium Absolute from Egypt, Osmanthus Absolute from China, Cipriol from India, Pink Peppercorn Carbon Dioxide Extract, Jasmine Absolute from Upper Egypt, Alibinum from Somalia, Cardamom from India, Patchouli from Indonesia, Cedarwood from Morocco, and Cistus from Spain. And yeah, if they're saying that it's got it, then it probably does have some in there. And Gavin says, Tonka bean as a secret, whatever next. Let's go to the pre-dipped one, pre-sprayed one. This is where they justify the £350 price tag. Well, 220 So yeah, not as shocking as 350 but it's 50 mils. Um, yeah, it is, you know, if I were to smell this, I would think I'm back in Dubai, modern Dubai, 21st century Dubai, not 80s Dubai. It doesn't do that immediate transporting me to 80s Dubai thing that um, some perfumes do. And it's, it's, it's fine. It's absolutely fine. I want to go back to the Roberto Greco. Do you know, just then, I just like got a hit of Coromandel, of like, of, if, if this were, maybe, maybe, it's the benzoin or the, I don't know, but the, the leatheriness, it's almost like, it's almost like the masculine counterpart to Coromandel. Coromandel with a lot of the sweetness toned down. Um, it's nice. And I think maybe it's that kind of woody powderiness that makes me think 80s as well. Mm. Okay. Somehow we made it. Thank you very much for putting up with me. Thank you very much for bearing with all of that. I hope it was mostly in sync. I will have to let the video processing finish and then sort of see on YouTube and make sure that things are okay. Because sometimes even if things aren't totally perfect during the broadcast, um, they then kind of like get sorted out after YouTube has done the video processing. Um, Dusan says, hi, Sharon, I'm expecting to see you on Ramsey's live stream on 10th December. Oh, let's give a shout out. Ramsey, 10th December. You're, going, you, you're all having a party there and I haven't been invited. Never mind, I can, I can cope, I can cope. Okay, thank you very much for watching. Thank you very much for all the comments and the um, interaction. And don't forget, tomorrow, 5 p.m., we will be striking a pose. There is going to be a playlist. It's a, it's a video with a playlist. Until then, take care, be good. Bye now.